Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment deck with Kellen as our commander. This 3-mana 2-2 double strike gives other creatures a 1 power bonus for each aura and equipment attached to it, but first we're going to use the Adventure for 1 and white, letting us search for an aura or equipment card and put it into our hand. So the goal is often to find our Colossus Hammer if we've got a way to equip it for free, giving our equipped creature plus 10 plus 10 and it loses flying, but we also have the various swords that we can find, giving protection from two different colors, so that can also be very helpful if we're up against a red-green deck for instance, get our sort of Forge and Frontier against blue-black or sort of a one cent future, and these also have a beneficial effect if we hit the opponent, so they also synergize very nicely with our double strike in Kellen. If we can hit the opponent twice we get to trigger those swords twice as as well. So this is our game plan. I've split up the deck into a few different categories. So for a quick rundown, we start with our mana acceleration in the first column, ways to potentially help us double spell on turn three, so we can get those expensive equipment in play a little bit sooner as well. Then we've got a fair amount of removal and other forms of interaction to keep up with the opponent's game plan while we establish our various equipment. We've got plenty of ways to discount our equip costs, potentially down to zero mana, so that will make it easier to equip our creatures with a Colossus Hammer, for instance. Then we've got our various equipment that we can find with Kellen, and those include the swords, but also other ways to grant various keywords like flying or trample. A lifelink can also be important in a racing situation. And then we've got a few ways to synergize with our equipment. Creatures that benefit from being equipped, getting a power bonus for instance, other double strikers, or ways to draw cards with equipment like Sram and Akiri. And finally we've got a few ways to protect our creatures from incoming removal, which is helpful when we're spending a lot of time and effort trying to suit up our creatures with the various equipment. And then we also have a few ways to get our creatures through for damage in the face of a potential chum blocker. We can give trample, or we can give protection from the right color and also get past those blockers. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, we also have a land tax, doesn't actually ramp us, but does ensure that we keep hitting our land drops, especially for on the draw. A Ragavan can make treasure tokens when it hits the opponent, also a nice one to suit up. We've got sticky fingers, which can go on one of our creatures, and then if it hits the opponent we get to make a treasure token, also very nice with double strike. Then we've got the various ramp artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the new Iron Crag, which actually has great synergy, potentially turning it into an equipment in this deck. And then Chandra, also very nice, getting to make extra mana with a plus one, but also gives us removal with a minus three. And that segues nicely into our removal category, where we have a Source to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt as staples for any red-white deck. Then there's Play with Fire, Strangle, Ossification as an aura that we can find with Kellen if we need removal in a pinch. And then there's a Reprieve as a pseudo counter spell. A Braid can deal with artifacts or creatures, same as a Rip Apart, which can also deal with enchantments. Just a Strike, good against larger creatures. And then Brutal Cathar, also a card we get to play in our red white deck, can exile opposing creatures. We've got a Loran to blow up artifacts or enchantments, and then Rebel Salvo often gets a discount dealing 5 to a creature or planeswalker. And then we continue with our cost reduction effects, where at 1 mana there's Kemba's Outfitter, so I did decide to include a few alchemy cards, since Red White can struggle to get enough playables otherwise. This is very nice alongside Colossus Hammer, making it 1 mana to equip in perpetuity. Then there's Sigardas 8, lets us play our equipment at instant speed, and when they enter the battlefield we can immediately attach them to a creature, so also very good with the hammer. There's a Fervent Champion, 1-1 one, one with First Strike and Haste, and gives us a 3 mana discount when it comes to equipping things onto the champion itself, so especially nice with the 3 mana swords, which we can now equip for free. Frodo can also equip things for free that cost 2 or 3 mana when it enters and whenever it attacks, so it doesn't combo with Colossus Hammer, but still very good with the various swords. Whereas Kemba can attach any equipment we control to itself when it enters the battlefield. There's Arms Scavenger, making it one cheaper to equip our various cards, and then also gets to find various equipment turn after turn, including Colossus Hammer. Foundry Beetle gives a random artifact a 1 mana discount every turn, a 2-2 first strike, can also be reconfigured as an equipment giving first strike. Danitha gives aura and equipment spells we cast a 1 mana discount, and is a 2-2 first strike vigilance lifelink, so also very nice to suit up. 
forge anew, can get back an equipment from our graveyard straight onto the battlefield, and once each turn we can equip something for free. There's a War Whip giving us a 1 mana discount for equip abilities, and comes attached to a 2-2 creature giving it double strike. A Bruiner also lets us equip something for free each turn and gives all equipped creatures plus 2 power. And then Nahiri can be used as removal, it can find additional equipment with a minus 2, and the plus 1 makes a 1-1 one, one token, and then we can attach anything we control to it for free, so it can also potentially cheat that Colossus Hammer onto it. And then Astor lets us reduce all equip costs down to 1 mana, and we can also potentially find an equipment when it enters the battlefield. Then we continue with our actual equipment, Rabbit Battery, one of those reconfigure creatures, a 1-1 one, one with haste that can give plus 1 plus 1 and haste. Got a Basilisk Collar, giving Death Touch and Lifelink, also very nice with First Strike or Double Strike. Got Colossus Hammer, of course. Shadow Spear for Trample and Lifelink, can also remove Hexproof and Indestructible. Got the Lizard Blades as a 1-1 Double Striking creature that can be reconfigured, giving Double Strike. Got the Boots for Hexproof and Haste. Then all of the Skyclaves to fly over potential blockers, especially useful against white decks where we don't have protection from white to search up. Got the Underill Flame of the West, making 1-1 one, one Spirit Tokens whenever we attack, in addition to plus 3, plus 1. And then we've got the various Swords. Body and Mind can mill the opponent while making Wolf Tokens. Fire and Eyes deals 2 damage and draws a card. Got Forge and Frontier, exiling the top 2 cards, lets us play an extra lands and the cards from Exile. And then uh, Once and Future lets us Surveil 2, and then we can replay a cheap Instance and Sorceries from the Graveyard, so that can also give us a bit of extra card selection. And then our next category has Esper Sentinel to punish the opponent for casting non-creature spells. Toolcraft Exemplar can often attack as a 3 power to 1 drop. Cacophony Scamp and Fireblade Charger also combo very nicely with Colossus Hammer as we can hit the opponent for 11 damage. And then in the case of Scamp, sacrifice it for another 11 damage. If Charger gets removed it will deal 11 and also gains haste when equipped. Goblin Cavalier, a 1-1 Trampler, getting plus 2 power for each equipment attached to it. Then there's the Captain as another double striking creature to synergize with the swords, can tax the opponent with her draw step whereas we get a discount, and then a SRAM can draw extra cards whenever we cast an aura or equipment spell, and Akiri can draw a card whenever we attack with an equipped creature, can also make those creatures indestructible if we remove the equipment from it. And then finally our protection category includes a Giver of Runes, we've got Skrelv as another one mana creature to protect our team, and then a God's Willing and Lauren's Escape as one mana instance, and finally, Monstrous Rage comes with a monster roll token attached, so if we put the aura on Kellen, it will also pump the rest of our team by one, so that has a great synergy as well. And then our mana base, just lots of red-white dual lands for mana fixing, mostly lands that come into play untapped. I did also include the Bivouac as an extra creature land to help us cross the finish line. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a green-white tokens deck. Our hands got a Shadow Spear, Trampling is nice over a bunch of 1-1s. One what we don't have is a sword giving protection from white, we have uh, some green sword here. And then uh, if we were to search up Colossus Hammer, no way to equip it for free. But I think this hand still has enough tools. Pro green, Trample, so if we find a way to equip Hammer for free, we could be good to go. For now, I guess Shadow Spear, since battery can't attack into the halfling. Could get a flying equipment to fly over a bunch of blockers. Mall of the Skyclaves, for instance. It's gonna be a Legion's Landing, making a 1-1, one -one. and a Reese the Redeemed. Okay, so next turn opponents threatening to transform the landing, which is annoying. Could play Rabbit Battery as a blocker here to try and stop it. Or we can just let it happen and use the adventure to be more mana efficient. I think I go with the battery and then I can also use God's Willing here to protect it so we don't lose the battery if we don't want to. And between blocking the commander or the token, it's a close call. They could just replay it right now if I trade off but at least it forces them to. And then a Brule Cathar is not bad. Can exile a token for good. Provisioner is next. And a land. Okay, probably exiling Provisioner now. 
and an into the north so that can find a land, make another treasure. So our opponent is ramping nicely. So at 5 mana we can play and equip Sword of Body and Mind. Next turn could equip Shadow Spear, use the Adventure. Could also play Kellen and then plan to equip that with a sword, but then we miss out on a bit of value. And Birth can eventually make a wall, which can also get around our protection. And a history to make a token. So I'm not hating the plan of getting the flying equipment here. The next turn opponent can start doubling their tokens, so the ground's going to get incredibly stalled. Outfitter, okay, so now I'm back on the hammer plan. So we can get hammer. We've got trample already. So play outfitter discounting hammer. And then play it. And hope they don't have removal for it. So next turn I could play Kellen, give it haste, and equip hammer, although we'll be missing trample then. So our opponent passes, planning to double their tokens. And yeah, it's very much possible that by doubling tokens over and over, they can still keep up with uh, our hammer. Now it did switch back to nighttime, although sadly we wouldn't be able to cast two spells to switch it back to day and exile their commander. So in that case, maybe just deploy Kellen here so we get our double striker going. We could give it haste with rabbit battery and suit it up with Colossus hammer. And that will also result in our team getting plus two power. Opponent quadruple blocking. Pretty happy that we get to take out a bunch of knights here, since those could have been pretty scary with the final chapter next turn. Opponent does get back Provisioner. But uh, yeah, we're kind of all in on Kellen getting Trample next turn. And then Lifelink should help us race. Quatly, okay, that can quickly get up to ultimate. Or they can pump one creature, which I can then block with the Outfitter. So I'm guessing they're gonna add loyalty. Also means they wouldn't be doubling tokens with the Redeemed. Unless they've got a land for Provisioner. Just an Arcane Signet. Okay. Point actually pumping the Life Linker here. So... Could trade for Provisioner and take 19. Opponent will gain 10 up to 37. I guess 38. So I'm just gonna equip Shadow Spear. And then could go face, could take out Hotly. Probably still best to go face. And then Watley minuses next turn. Now nah, let's take out Watley. I guess the downside here is that I only gain 14 life instead of 28 since Watley dies on first strike damage. Well done. But we should be safe to take a hit next turn. And then with sort of body in mind we can make a couple blockers next turn. So big top deck coming up. Opponent can double their tokens, but we should have enough power here to get through a bunch of blockers. Gain a lot of life in the process. 
And uh, yeah, we also get to mill the opponents while making additional wolves. Esper Sentinel doesn't do too much here. I guess I can move the hammer onto the Esper Sentinel so we tanks the opponent for a lot. And the wolf token is also getting pumped by Kellen's ability. So our opponent's got 64 cards remaining. Let's say I put Colossus Hammer on Esper Sentinel. And then probably still fine to move Shadow Spear onto a wolf. And then next turn I'll have to move them back. Definitely dead to a Crater Hoof Behemoth. See Tooth and Nail milled and Crater Hoof, so I guess that's not a concern. There's still the Cavalry, which could give flying. The deck list looks familiar. So no attacks, that's good. Take our turn. And uh, yeah, opponent's just gonna double their tokens. I could send in a big double striking hasty captain, but might as well just move in on Kellen once again. Opponent's got a lot of power and toughness here to put in front of Kellen. We'll see what they decide to do. Putting the walls would soak up 16, so then they still need a few more tokens to survive. But the longer this goes on uninterrupted, the more likely a Reese can take over. Okay, so looks like we get to take out multiple knights without losing Kellen. But we won't get to trigger our sword this way. Alright, so we'll just put all the knights first. And that's exactly enough toughness here to soak up our entire attack and not generate any wolves. Play Captain. Move Hammer back to Sentinel. And then... Could move something else, but this is probably good enough. So we got rid of the walls, which was most of their toughness. The Knights are gone, so just the one ones now remaining. But they also have lifelink. Could see the token start attacking, but nope. Gotta play defense. And yeah, it's going to be the same as last turn. Could send in the wolves and captain as well now. Alright, opponent's got enough tokens to once again deny Kellen from hitting them. Although if they lose too many tokens, then Reese also stops being powerful. So I think we'll be able to make wolves here. With double strike, we also deny the life gain from any potential blockers. So yeah, opponent putting multiple life linkers in front of Captain just to gain as much life as possible here makes sense. So milling might become our win condition if our opponent gains too much life. This looks good. And 
Make sure to put the non-life linker at the back. So we do get to trample over. Captain Aberhard going on a vacation here, and he's back. And yeah, opponents did the math, they're still at one. And uh, sure, we can move some equipment around. And pass a turn. So 41 cards remain. Chandra, I guess, can just close out a game by dealing two to the opponent. Could have also used it to take out Reese. But uh, yeah, this seems a bit more straightforward. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sauron, the Dark Lord, Grixis Control. So, sort of once and future has relevant protection. Can maybe get sort of fire and ice as well to give us pro red and the land tanks especially on the draw will ensure our land drops for the rest of the game so we just need to find some cheap creatures to suit up with all these swords brunor also makes it easier to equip for zero mana once each turn so yeah this could work out swords gives us an answer to Sauron, if we're willing to sacrifice something to ward. But uh, sort of once in future, getting back all these powerful instants is also quite nice. Now, artifact removal could still deal with the sword. So we'll have to see how we want to sequence, maybe bait out removal on the uh, sword of fire and ice first, and then go for once in future, which might be better. And our opponent actually declining to play a land to play around land tax. Yeah, that's one way to get around it, I suppose. Now it's kind of like we were on the play instead of the draw. Could also pass a turn and see who bites first. Because playing a beetle here isn't bad, but if they kill it, then we didn't really make a lot of progress. And then our opponent gets to play a normal game. So I think for one turn we'll pass and see if we can get the land tax value. Would have been nice to find a cheap creature to play in the meantime. Opponent will have to discard to hand size here, not wanting to give us extra lanes. But I think it favors the aggressive deck, where we need fewer lanes to operate, and then we can kind of sculpt a perfect hand in the meantime. Do I want to play Foundry Beetle and break the land tax here? I'm considering it. And then next turn, deploy our sword. Sure. That resolves. Do they have removal for it? They do. Okay. Scamp is an option too now. Could go with Scamp, pass a turn, or we can use Kellen's Adventure, get Sword of Fire and Ice, and then I'll have to decide whether or not I want to commit to it. Let's start here, see if that resolves, and then we can decide what to do next. Put on the gates. Getting that out of their hand isn't bad. So do I want to play Scamp? Or do I just keep two lands in play for land tax purposes? I've got a fourth land available already. I kind of want to get to a spot where we can play Bruinor with Sword of Once and Future in play already, so we can immediately equip Connect. So I guess we can wait another turn. Opponent's gonna duress, taking away our Sword of Once and Future. That's unfortunate. There is Forge anew in our deck, which can maybe get it back from the graveyard, but nope. Opponent actually goes for Source to Plowshares. So that sort of implies that they have Artifact Removal in hand already. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still incentivized to play the Sword here. Or I can just go Scamp, pass a turn, and take it from there. Opponent passes. 
So we can attack with Scamp now, and we have a clock. Don't really need the lanes anymore at this stage. So I think I'm fine just breaking the lane tanks and playing Sword. If it gets countered, we'll be sad, but then next turn we can adventure, get Sword of Fire and Ice, for instance. That resolves. Could see in a braid end of turn. Yep. Well, opponent had a lot of cheap answers, which made it possible for them to stay on a low land count. So, I think we still adventure here instead of play Brunor. And then Fire and Ice, I think, gets the nod over anything else. The Boots is also an option to give us some protection. It is nice with Brunor. Since Black Spot removal can still get around Sword of Fire and Ice. But this does give us a bigger edge if we actually get to connect with it. The main concern is eventually the army tokens still being able to block our creature that's equipped with the sword. But that's where uh, Monstrous Rage giving Trample can also help. Yeah, this line tanks had a very weird effect on the game. First time seeing an opponent just hold back their land drops, but may have worked out for them, we'll see. Skyclave Relic, one mana left. Yeah, I'm not putting them on another removal spell for Scamp, so I'm kind of liking Sword Equip. And we get to connect, draw a card, deal two damage. Opponent passes, Nahiri's not a bad draw. So we'll attack, see if our opponent kills Scamp. If they do, the coast is clear to resolve our Planeswalker. Hoping they can't remove my equipment. Colgan's command, that does exactly that. Okay, so sword down, unfortunately. Discard, mountain's fine. So, just hit for one. I think we go digging with Nahiri for another equipment here. I will calm the Can I and find Underrill, not bad. The next turn, with a land, I could play Brunor and Underill. In the meantime, our opponent still on three lands, so they may not have had a lot of lands to begin with. So did not find a land ourselves. Nahiri can make a token, which will equip Underill. So maybe it's just play Underill, suit up Scamp, attack. And then, if they take out the Scamp, I can still move Underill. Although we've got a God's Willing for protection as well. Go for the throat. Yeah, it seems worth getting a hit in. And then sort of body in mind. I don't mind. And then I hear he can make a token. And sure, we'll move on the rail. Even though having a high powered scamp, it could be sacrificed to then uh, deal more damage. Okay, opponent got enough mana to cast Rivers Rebuke, so we need to rebuild. And uh, yeah, keeping the sword on top now doesn't look as great. Nahiri make a token is an option, and then I can still play Scamp, keep up Lightning Bolts. Don't think Line Tax is going to be super relevant this game. Signet, another 
a ramp artifact and glory bringer okay so that's gonna go after nahiri we'll see if it exerts here as well so that explains why they maybe took source of plowshares earlier opponent's not exerting so leaving nahiri at one loyalty and do we just bold face here? I think we do. Bones at 10. And then if I were to play Underill, suit up Scamp, gets it up to 4 power. And then with a Monstrous Rage, that should be game. Sacrifice camp. And that's seven more. To the face. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rata Drabic, a likely a combo deck. Our hands got hammer and forge anew as a way to equip for free. Yeah, this is pretty decent. Don't mind playing hammer turn one. Even though Beetle would likely discount it. Okay, maybe discount another artifact. Opponent's got a turn one Sentinel. Yeah, let's just go with Beetle as opposed to adventuring here. Next turn we could rip apart the Sentinel if we'd like. So we don't have to worry about paying the tax. If I forge a new opponent gets to draw, I do get to equip Hammer for free. That's pretty nice. But let's just start here. And then Beetle can attack. And then I'm not quite sure what equipment to search up with Kellen. Could also go with Ossification to have removal for Autodrabic. Don't hate that idea since we already have Hammer. So we could forge a new equip Hammer. And then still play a Shadow Spear. And hit for 12. And then next turn we can trample over any blocker. So our opponent's gonna need removal. And then next turn we can adventure Kellen. Still play it. Rankle's a good answer, so they can sacrifice Cutthroat. Make a Sang Beetle. And then still have Rankle to answer my next play. Okay. So we could adventure, get ossification, exile rankle, and then still play Gavalier, which can potentially be a lethal threat. There might be some other options here. Underrail, if we connect to make some 1 1s, could be nice. But uh, this seems like a solid plan for now. And we can immediately equip Cavalier with a hammer, thanks to Forge and You. Pilgrim can technically keep them alive, although we've got more equipment to put on the Cavalier. So let's say we play Kellen. Could play Iron Crag, so that turns into an equipment as well. And then I could equip Iron Crank for free onto Gavalier. So that's already lethal. So then I could use two mana to put Shadow Spear on Kellen. 
So that's suited up for next turn in case I have removal here. And that would also pump Gavlier some more. Alright, so our supply shares, at least we gain a bunch of life. And Kellen is ready to attack next turn. Dark Ritual. So six mana available. If they take out Kellen, I can skip the adventure and just cast it next turn for five mana. Last turn I could have also waited for the opponent to kill my Gavalier and then equip Hammer for free in case they find a way to remove Forge and you to prevent me from equipping the Hammer. Carnage Dominus. It's not gonna save them here, especially now with Underill. So equip Kellen for free. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Could throw Underill on top as well. And that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Chandra, Hope's Beacon, so a mono-red control deck of sorts. Reprieve isn't bad as a way to answer their 6-drop. Gotta hope they don't remove Cold Steel Heart, naming red. And then Frodo can maybe suit up one of the protection from red equipment that we can find with Kellen. Outfitter is nice too. We are in trouble if they remove our Cold Steel Heart. So far, so good. And we get to untap. Land is good too. Alright, so we have options. I don't think we need to keep up Reprieve necessarily. But I can get a sword giving pro reds, play Outfitter to discount it. Or we can play Captain and have it removed by some burn spell. Since we do need to start clearing some of those instant speed removal spells. Could also just go with Colossus Hammer, since we have Outfitter now. That might be even better. Since if our opponent's removal is mostly instant speed, it doesn't matter that we give Pro Red if they can kill our creatures in response. So, play Outfitter. And then discount our Hammer. Play Hammer. And then I'm sure they'll be able to kill our first couple creatures. A Lightning Bolt for the first one. Frodo does not equip Colossus Hammer for free, but we can just pay one mana. Pirate's Pillage, okay, so now we have to be worried about Chandra resolving next turn. And yeah, Kemba was not a bad draw. I can play Kemba equipping Hammer for free and keep up Reprieve. Alternatively, I can play Captain and uh, still keep up Reprieve, and then next turn equip Hammer to hit for a ton of double strike damage. What do I prefer? I think going for Kemba makes sense, because that way it's less obvious that we're holding up a counter spell, and if they had an instant speed removal spell they would have been forced to use their treasures. So we'll Reprieve that. Wasting one of their treasures in the process. And now Lauren's escape gives us a way to protect Kemba as well. Not that a red deck is easily going to deal 13 damage. Okay, so could play Akiri, attack, draw card. Seems reasonable. And then probably no need to abrade their treasure token. Just gonna hang on to a Lauren's Escape. Could also channel Crucible for two mana thanks to our two legendaries giving it a discount. So Chandra resolves. But at 12 life, it's gonna be tough for them to survive. Unless they've got some artifact removal here. Yeah, they sure do. A braid. That's rough, but Lauren's Escape can also give artifacts indestructible. So we'll wait for them to get to copy from a braid, targeting Cold Steel Heart, I'm sure. And then protect Colossus Hammer. And then doesn't matter what we keep on top, since their opponent's dead. Awesome! So the secret mode on Lauren's Escape coming in handy. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw facing the Scarab God, so getting our Sword of Once and Future is going to be key. No red mana means we probably mulligan. This should work out better. Still would like to pick up some extra lanes. Can place Krelv to protect the rest of my team. A land tax? Well, that's one way to get more lanes. We'll see if our opponents declines to play their land for the turn. They do not. Okay, so next turn we're looking at maybe a Rampant Battery plus Skrelv. Just want to try and empty my hand as much as possible. And then we can worry about getting our sword later, once we have more mana. Got a bunch of burn spells as well, so we could technically kill a Scarab God with 5 damage. Tutelage, opponent's trying to mill us. Could potentially work in our favor once we get our Sword of Once and Future to get back spells from our graveyard. Such as Rip Apart to destroy either artifact or enchantment. Keep thinning out the deck. I guess if we're getting milled, I might want to stop searching lands up here. But for now, it's fine. And then... Yeah, I could play Frodo, play Toolcrafts. Hope our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, since Skrelv is not going to be too helpful there. Uh, I guess Frodo suit up the Rabbit Battery, gives us a bit of insurance there. Yeah, that's not bad. And then when am I planning to get the sword? Could do it next turn, and then turn after, once we have 5 mana, I can play and equip, or potentially attack with Frodo if it's still around. Sure. So we'll try that approach. Put on mills for two. Lizard Blades is gone. And Colossus Hammer is gone too. Take our turn. And Land Tanks triggers. And Cliff Top Retreat the draw. So, can adventure, get the sword, and then still play Toolcraft Exemplar and or keep up a couple burn spells. Start here. This may get countered. Alright, resolves. Once in future. And then... Next turn, I would have the mana to kill Scarab Gods and still play Swords, and then Frodo gets to attach it for free. So I'm not too worried about keeping a Bolt and play with Fire. So if that's the case, I should be able to play a Toolcraft Exemplar here. Could have been a reason to play a Time Bivouac here. Memory Lapse my Toolcraft, that's fine. And discard a couple of lanes. They might have a counter for Sword of Once and Future, of course. Hope they tap out for Scarab God. It's gonna be Enter the God Eternals. So, 4 damage to a creature, you gain life equal to the damage dealt this way, target player mills 4 and amass 4. So, killing my own Skrelv is not gonna fizzle their card since it has multiple targets. Okay, so that works. But also means the coast is clear for Sword of Once and Future. So that's nice. I'll hang on to my burn spells. And I'm still not too concerned about getting milled out here. Maybe I should be. And draw Guardian Idol. Okay, so play Sword. 
Does their opponent have a Pact of Negation? Probably just Maze Mind Tome holding priority. So if Frodo attacks, it can equip the sword for free. And then we can probably deal with the token. Or we can destroy their uh, enchantment here with a rip apart. Start by attacking. Opponent can block. Yeah, destroying the tutelage is probably the play. And then I'll keep a reprieve on top. And then I can either keep up my two burn spells or tap out for Guardian Idol. Both of which are reasonable. I'll play the Idol. Okay. Even if they kill Frodo with an Edict effect, I'll still have the sword in play with Rampant Battery ready to go. And yeah, opponent does have a Plate Crafter, so that's a decent answer. But blue black still gonna struggle to get rid of my artifact. Could play Kellen suited up with a battery as well. And now we have a counter spell for protection. So play Kellen. Tapping Guardian Idol. That resolves. Can equip sword onto Kellen himself. And if that resolves, it should be safe enough to equip Battery. And attack. And then if I bolt the opponent's face... They're pretty close to just dead here. Hit them for 5. Keep Brunor. Get back bolts. And another 5. And they wouldn't be getting back anything here. Scamp with haste could also do some damage here. But I'll keep Brunor on top. Okay. Bones at 5. So they're gonna need another Edict effect here. And they actually have a Soul Shatter. But yeah, we'll see if they can deal with the Rabbit Battery. Can suit up our Battery with a Sword. Play with Fire. Get back Play with Fire. That's going to be more than enough. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Shelob. So, black, green, spiders. Our hands got Sigarda's aid. Bit light on creatures, perhaps, but at least we can protect one with God's willing. So I'll give it a shot. Can get Colossus Hammer, since we have Sigarda's aid. Although we'll only be able to equip it once for free. Now I guess with Kemba we can give it another shot later. So yeah, I think uh, I like Colossus Hammer. If there was a uh, black green sword, then that might have been the pick instead. So now I could play Kellen. And then if it survives next turn, could just kill the opponent with a double striking creature. Seems fine. If they take it out, we can try again with Donatha. That opponent's got to cut down. Fair enough. I guess going with Donatha has the advantage of letting us play a free Colossus Hammer. Now there's a Fireblade Charger as another option. Could rip apart the Phyrexian Arena, so... Yeah, there's certainly a few things we could do here. If I play Charger, play Hammer, then it will have haste. So I can almost kill the opponents. Yeah, I guess with their own Phyrexian Arena and a play with Fire in Hand, that's not a bad plan. So now if they try and kill Charger, they would take 11. They could potentially destroy the equipment itself. That's potentially a concern. And 
Death Sprout's Charger, yeah, that's 11 damage plus 2 from Play With Fire. And that's game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Xenagos, the God of Revels. Can be very scary indeed, so it's all about being as fast as possible. We've got our Colossus Hammer, no way to equip it for free, although turn 1 Fervent Champion, turn 2 Lizard Blades. Now Lizard Blades is a reconfigure equipment, so it doesn't actually have equip to be able to put it on the Fervent Champion for free, but that's okay. Now, if we do end up getting the Red Green Sword, important to point out is that we can't have the protection from red equipment on the same creature that's also equipped by the Lizard Blades, since the red equipment will fall off. So that's going to be very nice next turn. For now, I think Lizard Blades makes sense. Okay, so next turn opponent can play Xenagos, but for now we get to play Sword of Fire and Ice, attach it to Fervent Champion for free. And attack. There's Xenagos. Now a Justice Strike could be a nice answer to whatever our opponent plays next. And I get to kill Paradise Druid here in the meantime. And then I'll have two mana left, so I could adventure Kellen, get the Red Green Sword. Although I could attack first and see what we draw. I could have also moved the sword onto the Double Striker, which would have been pretty solid. So we can adventure and get Forge on Frontier, keep up just a strike to kill whatever large creature opponent plays next. And Ilharg I'll happily take out. And then we should have Lethal here, if I go sword, put it on the Lizard Blades. I guess Underill might have been even better, but this is more fun. Sweet. Alright, so we get to see our red-white equipment deck in action, and even though Kellen didn't get to attack all that often as a creature, the adventure was often good enough, just helping us find those swords in specific matchups, finding our Colossus Hammer when we were ready to equip it for free, gives our deck a lot more consistency, which is definitely appreciated in a best-of-one singleton format, which by definition is going to be pretty inconsistent. So yeah, I'm definitely a fan of Kellen if you're looking for a powerful equipment commander. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.